All right. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Token D Rock. I hope all of you are having a wonderful Wednesday, February 16th. You're watching the date of the stream. Things are looking more or less kind of same where they were roughly about the past 24, 48 hours. Total crypto market cap is just shy of $2 trillion. Bitcoin is holding above 43K for the time being. Ethereum has come down a little bit. It is uh, a bit closer to 3K compared to yesterday when it was above 3,100. Um, we are seeing a little bit <clears throat> of volatility in the market. AVAX is coming up a little bit. Um, taking a look at the Bitcoin dominance, we are sitting at 42.2%. Ethereum dominance did climb a little bit to 18.8%, which is up a little bit from, I believe, 18.5%. Looking at the hourly chart, we can see that the bulls got rejected. Bitcoin got rejected as it faced that range of resistance between roughly 44,500 and 45,800. It hit that resistance pretty heavy right at 44.5. We've come down. It seems to be that we've found some support right around 43,400. We'll see if that holds. Um, it looks like it wicked down to 43,300. But yeah, we'll see if that holds. Uh, we may be retesting this line of support next, then this one. And obviously, if these don't hold, these are in play. Possible price points should be paying attention to. So getting into the news, uh, hopping over with Ukraine, um, this Instagram account that I that I follow talked about how multiple government and bank websites in Ukraine were down in an apparent large scale cyber attack. Um, we're not sure whether it's it's actually the Russians doing this, but um, multiple websites in Ukraine are unreachable, including the Ministry of Defense, the Armed Forces, Private Bank, and Oshad Bank. The news was just announced by the Ukrainian Cybersecurity Center. More to come. The reason why this video is called the coming of age for Bitcoin and crypt in a centralized world is because look at this in Ukraine. A huge cyber attack occurred on multiple websites, including banking websites. You can see why this is a problem because uh, people in Ukraine right now with all the tension going on, some people are looking to flee the country, and if there's a large-scale cyber attack occurring where several banking websites are down, um, that means people potentially can't access their capital or their fiat paper money, which is not good, you know, because uh, then they aren't able to move freely, you know. This is one of the many reasons why Bitcoin and crypto will be adopted by the masses, because of concerns like this, you know, countries are going to do what countries are going to do, you know, they're going to go to war with another, they're going to, um, there's going to be cyber attacks on one another, like this is the world we live in. And adopting Bitcoin and crypto is is kind of a way out of that whole system. It's not out of the system entirely, but you have you kind of have a, a way out if things uh, get a little dicey, you know, when uh, governments are, are pushing for centralized power. But um, sticking with the Ukraine issue, Wednesday, Russia's defense ministry published a video showing tanks and military vehicles leaving annexed Crimea after a drill, adding that some troops were returning to their permanent bases. Um, that's what Reuters is reporting. NATO Security General Jen Stoltenberg said on Wednesday that there's no evidence of de-escalation and that Russia is increasing the number of troops per The Guardian. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said on Wednesday what we're seeing is no meaningful pullback, according to CNN. According to U.S. President Joe Biden, some 150,000 Russian troops are still massed near the border. Meanwhile, the Russian parliament's lower chamber voted to call on President Vladimir Putin to recognize eastern Ukrainian regions of Donetsk and Luhansk as independent. The Ukrainian foreign minister called this de facto and de jure 
withdraw Minsk agreements with all the attendant consequences. Going into the Minsk agreements, there was, uh, and they drafted and signed the first Minsk protocol that went into effect on September 5th of 2014. Essentially, they they set up a buffer zone um, inside Ukraine. The blue line is essentially where the U- Ukrainian border is. The red line is the uh, is the the, Ru- the Russian claim of the land where where their border ends, and then this these gray lines as the buffer zone, fifteen kilometers each side of these lines of control. If we read a bit more into it, like it it basically collapsed. Everything they agreed to said that they were going to do with this agreement, like none of the things have been set in motion. So it's essentially all just talks, you know, talks with no action, no action backing it. And then they did like a Minsk II protocol. Basically, nothing has really gotten done. Ukrainian foreign minister admitted that Ukraine is going to withdraw from that agreement that was between them, Russia and a few other um, countries that were kind of overseeing the agreement, Germany and France being two of those. We have to be very careful about hysteria and calls for war and stuff like that, because hyping people up to to go to war is a very dangerous game that some politicians and some people in media are doing right now. This lady, Maria Zakharov, Uh, A foreign ministry spokesperson from Russia says peace in the region is threatened not by any reviews of Russian and Belarusian defense capability, but by Western steps to build up NATO forces on the Union state border and to supply weapons to Kiev. And that's the truth. There's there's two sides to this conflict, you guys like. I'm an American first, but I recognize that there are other powers in this world that we need to cooperate, um, believe it or not, with. There are going to be people that we disagree with on many fundamental issues, but we shouldn't be rushed to take military action against people we disagree with. The Sun was running the story, look, Russia set to invade Ukraine at any time with massive missile blitz and 200,000 troops. U.S. intelligence claim it's fake news. And, peop- and, you know, the media is going to run stories like this to hype people to get to war because war is uh, very profitable. Definitely not for you and me, the people who ultimately pay the price if we were to have World War Three. you know. Be careful about media that's propagandizing, um, you know, the movements of the Russian military or the U.S. military. Like, you got to be wary of all this stuff because... Um, they're going to frame things in a way to get you to want war. And a lot of people have never seen war, and myself included, and I don't want to see war firsthand. And the people begging for war are going to see war firsthand if they keep asking what they, what they want, you know. And then another thing that's going to drive the adoption of Bitcoin and crypto is the fact that like, look at this, the the censorship of ideas on main, on social media and various platforms on the Internet is ridiculous. Like, look at this. They took out this person's Twitter account. It was an account called Defiant Ls. Basically, they took a, a tweet from a few years ago and they compared it to a tweet like today. And they show like the hypocrisy between the the celebrity or the politicians and like it's pretty hilarious like i'm going to show you an example of justin trudeau because uh he's kind of topic of today that he's actually a big vp salesperson for bitcoin believe it or not as i've said many times i do not think it is ever appropriate to send an army against canadian citizens said trudeau back on march 4th of 2020 and on cbc ottawa tweeted out something saying Ottawa police might need military aid to end downtown occupation. That's what the chief said. It's it's very interesting that Mr. Trudeau keeps up with his his talks of, oh, well, we need to get rid of these protesters. If you listen to what the guy is saying, it's 
it's very worrisome, okay? Because he's sounding like a particular mustached figure from the 1940s with the way he regards uh, people who have chosen not to take the medical treatment that he is pushing so hard for. He said they don't believe in science. They're often misogynistic, often racist. No, they're mm, not. That was not that, smart of him at all. Right. He said, but they take up space. Mm. And oh. with that, we have to make a choice in terms of a leader as a country. Do we tolerate these people? It's like, tolerate these? Now you do that's, sound like no, him. Mm -hmm. that, that uh, and recently he talked about them holding, holding unacceptable views. But um, look at this. Just in Netherlands to go back to normal. Almost all restrictions will be lifted by February 25th, the health minister announced. He added, we are now in a different phase. A lot of people are infected, but the picture of hospital occupancy is completely different. It remains virtually stable. That's what Ernst um, Cooper said, the health minister of uh, Netherlands. Again, Mr. Trudeau and some of his Canadian politician um, constituents or buddies are driving the adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency with stuff like this. In yesterday's video, we talked about how a lot of truckers are protesting in Ottawa. They've been there for roughly two to three weeks. They've pretty much been entirely peaceful. They've been eating. They've been having a good time, spending time with friends and family, trying to get their point across to the government peacefully and respectfully. They're not causing harm to anyone. Um, they're probably a little bit annoying to the residents of Ottawa, but uh, it's a small price to pay for freedom because these people are expressing their First Amendment rights, again, respectfully and peacefully, you got to make an emphasis on that because Mr. Trudeau labeled these protesters white supremacists. He called them a fringe minority. Um, but yeah, they're moving the military into Ottawa to take the truckers out to stomp out the protests. But look at this. Canada's deputy prime minister says under the Emergencies Act that Trudeau passed or enacted a few days ago, the emergency powers came out. Banks can immediately freeze or suspend bank accounts without a court order and be protected from civil liability. How is Canada part of the free world with stuff like that? And I can say the same thing about the U.S. too, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to BS myself here. A lot of the same authoritarian policies that are occurring in Canada also exist here in the U.S. And it's unjust. It shouldn't happen. And as more and more people start putting two and two together about why this is exactly wrong and the danger behind this, I think more and more people will adopt Bitcoin and crypto. Historically, when governments use emergency powers, they become the most dangerous towards their own citizenry. You know, he did say, oh, it's just a small fringe minority of truckers. And now it's such a small fringe minority that you need emergency powers, right? <laughs> Funny how that works, Mr. Trudeau. And Invest Answers, um, James actually tweeted this out. Congrats to the new Bitcoin VP of sales. He's doing an amazing job. <laughs> I love these tweets. It's it's great. Governments will shut off your bank account when they disagree with you. Hashtag Bitcoin fixes that. And that's right, guys. And that's the thing. It's like you have to realize that if there's ever a point in history that you disagree with the government and you're speaking your opinion and you're you're maybe causing a ruckus, you know, you're you're changing a few people's minds because you're getting them to think a bit differently, th they'll censor you. Look at Joe Rogan, okay? Uh, look at so many other people. Robert Malone. All these people are getting censored because they are spreading, um, you know, unpopular opinions or opinions that go against the narrative or what the establishment and the powers that be have said is truth. I compare it to um, religion in the sense like with Catholicism and the Ten Commandments on the stones. It's kind of like that, you know, like people, the, the establishment says these are the rules and you can't question them. And if you do, well, you're going to get censored. You might end up in prison, jail. They might shut off your bank account. And 
I can tell you that Bitcoin and crypto is a way out of that centralization. And it's going to drive decentralization because people are going to get fed up with this stuff. People around the globe are starting to get fed up with the encroachment of the free, very freedoms that um, many of our grandfathers or great grandfathers fought for, you know, 100 years ago or even just 80 years ago in World War II. A lot of those freedoms that they fought for are getting encroached on. By, the, by governments around the world. I think people are, are coming to this mass realization that Bitcoin and crypto is the way out. Trudeau is the only one doing this. Look at this. Quebec is canceling its vaccine passport program in the wake of national protests. Trudeau is the only um, big figure politician in Canada that's pushing this garbage. I, I don't know what else you guys want me to tell you. Like everything's getting digitalized. Um, China rolled out their central bank digital currency last year. The U.S. is going to do something similar. And the whole thing with that is what if they do a UBI system, let's say five to 10 years down the line or whatever, because inflation's not going away, you guys. That's also driving the, the case for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because Bitcoin is a direct hedge against to the monetary inflation that we experience in crypto in general, has so many utility cases, but also can be can also serve as a hedge against inflation somewhat. Um, if they do a UBI system, let's say everyone gets X amount of dollars per month. Oh, well, you're little Jimmy, you're expressing unpopular opinions. You're expressing um, opinions that go against the narrative or the what the establishment says is true. Oh, well, you're going to get less credits or you're not going to get credits at all. You know, like that's the world we could be seeing here in the next five to 10 years. I'm not saying it's going to happen everywhere. OK, it's going to happen a few countries first. And then depending on how people perceive the technology and, and perceive these new implementations or the new norm, it may expand to more countries or maybe it'll get stomped out. Maybe people will just get fed up with this and demand decentralization. But I think we are in for a big fight. I think the banks are going to have to change drastically because of Bitcoin and crypto. I had a coworker tell me like, dude, I, I moved from Colombia and it was such a change coming here to the US. He's like, in Colombia, we use nothing but cash. We don't use debit cards. We don't use credit cards. There's none of this like here in the States. And he's like, when I came over here to the States, it was such a culture shock. Like, I saw people just swiping cards and everything. And I'm like, see, like he sees just from going Colombia to the US, he can see the difference. Like everything is much more digital here. Like, you know, between the, the debit cards, the credit cards, um, the tech, the technological stuff, like everything's getting digital, you guys. Um, it's that's just the world. That's just the way the world is headed. I, I hate to like um put it that way but i think people are going to get fed up and they're going to demand for bitcoin and cryptocurrency to be legal tender because what they are doing to our currency and how they are able to limit how we interact with one another with these cryptocurrencies is ridiculous and i think people are getting fed up with the between the mandates and these limitations are are ridiculous that the centralized system has imposed on us but not to sound too doom and gloom honestly i think i'm very hopeful for the future because i think we are on the cusp of something very very big i think the next few years will be pretty tough in the sense that I think they're going to pull all the stops to make it seem like the cat's not out of the bag. But there's going to come a breaking point where majority of people are like, oh, OK, I get Bitcoin. I get crypto now. Why do I need these banking institutions? Why should the government have a say of whether I can send this money to this person for a protest or not? I see a massive unshackling. Like, I feel like we're all kind of like walking around with shackles on our feet. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to achieve that dream, that vision that we have, however long of endeavor that is, you know, maybe, maybe your dream is like 10 years down the road. Maybe it's 
50 years down the road. I think those shackles are going to come off a lot of people's feet because they're going to realize that they can break free from the traditional system with Bitcoin and crypto. They can hedge against the massive amounts of inflation the government's going to inflict on its own citizen and the currency by buying Bitcoin. You don't have to opt into the centralized system that they have in place for us. I'm not saying, oh, be a hippie, you know, go go out in the woods and 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 eat berries from the tree. Like, just do that. Like, I'm not saying that we as a people are, are starting to realize that we don't need to go along with the system exactly how they want us to. You know, we can we can create our own reality. There's this person that I follow on YouTube. His name's Infinite Waters, and, and he has this great acronym for the five letter word that we have um really become fearful of the past you know two years covid creating our vision in detail if your vision is doom and gloom if your vision is the world's ending it's it's only getting worse you know there's nothing i can do to change my reality for me my family my friends then that is your reality that's your vision but if your vision is okay Things are getting a bit tough, but there's something I can do about it. I can buy Bitcoin. I can buy these cryptocurrencies and hedge against inflation. I don't need to opt into the system that they're trying to force me into. They're, tr they're trying to pigeonhole you into, into something that you don't want to do. You know, whatever that may be, you can, you can interpret that in, in many ways, shapes or forms. But um, I think people are going to realize why am i doing all of this i i'm i'm creating all this suffering for myself whether it's you know working this dead-end job that i feel unfulfilled about and then i spend all my money at, at you know for the weekend or whatever and then it's just like a vicious cycle and people live their whole lives like that but i feel like a lot of people this pandemic has given people the opportunity to reflect and realize, you know what, I need to change something. This isn't working. And I think a lot of people are going to hit that realization here in the next few years. So that's why I think we are seeing the coming of age for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. It's not going to happen this year, but I really think we are on the cusp of something huge, you guys. I had to get these ideas out there and express them to you guys because... I'm sure I'm not the only one who who shares these beliefs or has these beliefs. There's plenty of people out in the world that probably share these very same beliefs. Maybe not everything to a T, but more commonality than there's difference between us, you guys. And that's the thing that we need to keep in our minds because the world, the politicians, the media will try to convince you otherwise that we are so different you know we are nothing alike that couldn't be the furthest thing from the truth we are very very alike you know we we share this earth together we eat we breathe yes we don't experience the same lives but we can you know invest wisely together into our futures to create our vision in detail to create a world that's better for the generations to come and i think bitcoin and crypto is a part of that vision that's just me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know down below in the comments section. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to be notified when we go live. Got something a bit different planned tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you then. Until then, guys, take care. Have a great day and invest wisely.